Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week is my wife's Instant Pot out of the kitchen. This thing is somewhat of a Swiss army knife. I guess it, uh, it's a pressure cooker, it's a slow cooker, it makes yogurt and rice, all sorts of fun stuff. But this particular one uh, had some damage to it. Um, my wife uh, was trying to free up some space on the counter and pick this guy up and set it down on top of our stove and unfortunately the bottom of it um, uh, melted and she was going to get rid of it and just buy a new one and I thought you know what I think I could make a new bottom uh, for that guy so first of all before I flip this over let me take the lid off so stuff doesn't go flying here and the specific model of this one by the way uh, which is going to matter if you want to use the same STL is the model IP Duo 80V2. Okay, so I moved the camera up a little bit and flipped this over so you guys can get a good look at the bottom of it. And the heat damage on the bottom here was uh, this foot um, and this one little clip and then this entire bottom um, cover piece was just kind of all a melted goo. Uh, fortunately, the, uh, the little rubber piece in the middle of the foot here is still at the correct height so it doesn't wobble around at all. And uh, while the retaining clip is a bit damaged, um, there's five in total uh, that this guy rotates and locks on. Um, and that one is still largely in place. So I wasn't too worried about those things, but this bottom cover absolutely needed to be replaced. And I took some measurements from the original and designed this one basically to match the original one with one change. Uh, there was quite a, a, an angle um, on these louvers. Uh, I believe just from aesthetics perspective uh, to make it so that you couldn't easily see into the bottom uh, of this guy but that it still float air. I made them just straight through to flow even more air and for ease of printing um, and I don't think it's affected anything uh, doing that but let's get this cover off and we can see the uh, we can see inside this guy as uh, as well so I can give you some other considerations that I was thinking of and to to do that there's just a single screw here And as I mentioned, this guy rotates about two degrees and then just lifts straight off. So inside this guy, and this is important to consider anytime you're making like a replacement panel, uh, panel for something that is um, electrical or, you know, gets hot. Um, so I really looked inside this thing and said, okay, where are the heating elements? Um, you know, what am I protecting, you know, from the bottom of this? And really the only thing that's close to the bottom is this circuit board. Uh, this is the control circuitry. and Anything that gets really hot, the actual bottom of the instant pot itself, the heating elements or contactors, um, you know, are far away from anything flammable. Okay, well, now they're far away from anything flammable. Um, so, you know, I was comfortable that this, the, the, uh, the bottom of this was going to be just okay in PETG plastic. This is probably ABS now, and there's not a significant difference in the temperature resistance between the, uh, between the two. I don't believe this has any glass fiber reinforcing. Um, so that's it for this. Let's go take a look at the design and see if there's anything that I missed. Okay, so here's the design for this and uh, fairly straightforward. Again, I based this on measurements of the original. Um, the original one for this was melted um, off kind of a, almost at about like maybe the, the halfway point. Um, so I was still able to get a fairly good diameter from it and get measurements of the other, um, like the distance away for, for this section here. And this section was not melted at all. So I was able to get pretty good dimensions um, from that part of the cover. Uh, so you, you're gonna print this facing down. Um, this, everything on this side is flat with the exception of this area here. This is gonna be raised. This goes over a raised section on the instant pot uh, that lines up with where that retaining screw is. So you will need to make sure you include supports uh, down here if you print one of these guys. Um, but uh, you're not going to see that part, so you don't need to worry about trying to clean up that rough surface where you break off the supports because it's, it's going to be hidden anyway. Um, let's see what else. I did round most of the edges on this, including the, uh, the vents, uh, both for aesthetics and just to make it so that airflow is a little bit easier in there. And while the, the difference in height of the outer ring that locks into those feet and this one here, these are important because um, this needs to lock onto those rings. Um, the center is really also just there for aesthetic, so uh, I just followed the design of the original, but you could knock that out and just leave it uh, one solid area if you want. Probably cut the print time down by a little bit. 
Uh, but guys, I think that's it for, for this design. If you've got the same Instant Pot or if you've got one that's similar and you want to try this, uh, the STL will be posted on my site, fpfdesigns.com. Um, link to that site will be down in the uh, show more for this video. Um, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you got something out of this, if you enjoyed it, if you like using your 3D printer to actually fix things around the house or make things better, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do a short video like this uh, every single Friday. And uh, click that bell and you'll get a notification when they come out. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care. Mm -hmm.